Hi guys, welcome this to the third video of average. So we have done a lot of things in average yet. Now we'll discuss some questions. You can see the questions behind. Now there's a history of this question. This was the first question I have, get, uh, I have got in CAT. Like in 2014, this was the first question of my paper. And trust me what I happened, I just kind of froze to see this question, which is a very easy question also. But this thing can happen with you also. So you need to be prepared always. You need to be calm and you need to be confident. So let's start with this kind of question. So it is 50 to 100 ka sum. We cannot use directly the formula n into n plus 1 upon 2. We cannot because it is not from 1. So if I need to make it from 1, what I need to do? I just need to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 100 minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 49. Now if I subtract this thing from the entire sequence, what I'll get? I'll get the remaining portions. The remaining portions which are actually very very important. Now the remaining portion if I get, so I, if I subtract this thing, I'll get this thing only. So what is the sum of this thing? The formula is n into n plus 1 upon 2. Why I'm writing the formula again? Just to make sure you remember this. So what is the sum here? 100 into 101 by 2 minus 49 into 50 by 2 okay so if I multiply this thing I'll get 50 50 what I'll get 50 50 and 25 into 49 that is if I do to multiply this thing so do it like this 25 into 50 minus 1 so which is 1 2 5 0 minus 25 which is 1 2 2 5 so what is your answer your answer is 3 8 2 5 and hence the answer is 3 8 2 5 now this is one way we can solve this question, right? But we can use other ways to solve this question as well. And what is that? Now it is an easier way to solve this question. First tell me how many digits, how many numbers are there from 50 to 100? There are 51 numbers, not 50 numbers. There are how many numbers? 51. Because when both are inclusive, the first number and the last number, the total numbers is 100 minus 50 plus 1, if they are consecutive integers. Think about the, how many numbers are there from 10 to 20. How many numbers are there? That is 20 minus 10 plus 1. 20 minus 10 plus 1. Plus 1, sorry. So which is it? 11 numbers. Now think about how many numbers are there from 50 to 100. The numbers, total number is 100 minus 50 plus 1. Plus 1. So which is 51. So 51. So how many observations you have? We have 51 observations. And what is the average? It's an equidistant numbers. So the average is nothing but first plus last by 2 which is 50 plus 100 by 2, which is 75. Now think about if the average is 75, what I need to find? I need to find what is the total. And I know that by the formula, sum is nothing but average into number of terms n. So which is 75 into n is what? n is 51. And if you solve this thing, it is 75 into 50 plus 75 which is 3750 plus 75, which is 3825. So this is the easier way to solve this question. But remember, this kind of questions can be solved by using arithmetic progression as well. But, but what is important here, we generally do not use arithmetic progression to solve this question. And we will learn how to use arithmetic progression in algebra, not in arithmetic. So that's why these two are the most like easiest way to solve this question. So I hope you have understood this question. If you have, then let's go for the next one. The average of 10 consecutive even integers is 67. Then what is the least number? And what is the difference between the highest and the least number? Now how to solve this question? The easiest way to solve this question to use the equidistant numbers concept. Because consecutive integers are equidistant. Consecutive even integers are equidistant numbers. Like that means these numbers are in arithmetic progression. If there are arithmetic progression, we can use symmetry. What is symmetry? If 67 is the average of two consecutive even numbers, two consecutive even numbers, then these two numbers should have been 66 and 68. Next, if 67 is the average of four consecutive even numbers, then I have to add one even number in right, one in left. If it is six, then it is 72, it is 62. If it is 8, 74, 60. If it is 10, 76 and 58. Now if it is 76, 58 and all these things are here. If all these things are here, what is the 
smallest number that is 58 and what is the difference between the highest and smallest that is nothing but 76 minus 58 which is 18 so this is one of the easiest way to solve this question now what exactly other things we can do with this question that we'll see we can solve this question by generally also by using algebra let's the first term is a plus 2 into 0 second term is a plus 2 into 1 third term is a plus 2 into 2 fourth term is a plus 2 into 3 so you can see that t1 t2 t3 t4 it goes on like this so what will be the t10 that is a plus 2 into 9 why it is 9 because for 3 it is 2 for 2 it is 1 for 4 it is 3 for 10 it has to be 9 so it is always a plus 18 so irrespective of the number average the difference of 10 consecutive integers between the highest and least is always a plus 18 minus a this is 18 so we can conclude the difference of n consecutive even numbers or the difference of highest and least between among n consecutive odd number is always 2 into n minus 1. So for this thing here n is 10 so your answer is 2 into 10 minus 1 which is 18. So remember the difference between the highest and the least number among 10 consecutive even integers is or among 20 consecutive even integers among n consecutive either even or odd integers is twice into n minus 1. So this is the thing and also if you do this add all of these things and do the average also you can solve this question but this is a much more lengthier method. Now I have to teach you three four things that's why I have kept and kept this space. The four important thing if I said the average of 10 consecutive even integers is 58 then what is the smallest and what is the highest number? The answer is it is not determinable it cannot be determined because if there are even number of even integers the average has to be odd even number of consecutive even integers kya bolao main? even number of consecutive even integers even number of consecutive even integers example 2 4 6 8 even number of consecutive even integers the average is 5 next is if i have odd odd number of consecutive even integers odd number of consecutive even integers 2 4 6 8 and 10 then the average is 6 which is even integer so here it is odd here it is even so if it is odd number of consecutive even integers then the average is even okay next is odd number of consecutive odd integers example 3 5 7 9 11 your answer is odd so odd number of consecutive odd integers the answer is odd the average is odd now if it is even number of consecutive odd integers example is 3 5 3 5 7 9 even number of consecutive odd integers then the average is even that is 6 which is even clear there are four things you need to remember even number of consecutive even integers average is odd odd number of consecutive even integers average is even odd number of consecutive odd integers average is odd even number of consecutive odd integers the average is even remember this is a very important thing you should remember because if sometimes the question is asked the average of nine consecutive odd integer is 54 it is impossible if it is nine consecutive odd integers the answer has to be odd so you can directly nullify all of these things just by seeing the question that's why this concept is so so important right so let's go for the next one what is the average of all two digit numbers which leave a remainder three when divided by eight so two digit numbers so first you need to think what is the smallest two digit numbers that is eight into one plus three which is eleven now what is the largest two digit number just divide 99 by 8 so 8 by 99 so this is 96 so this is 3 so the smallest number is 11 the largest number is 99 and these numbers are equidistant the numbers are like this 11 19 27 dot dot, dot 99 so if the numbers are equidistant or the numbers in progression what is average we already learned the average is first term plus last term by 2 so what is your answer 55 
I hope I have made you understood. But please do not take start with 3 because 3 is not an even number. If it is from 1 to 100, you can start with 3. But in case of two digit numbers, you have to start with 11 and you have to end with 99. So this is again non-negotiable. You have to start with 11 and 99. End with 99. I hope I have made you clear for this. The next question. The average age of a group of 24 yoga students is 21 years. If the age of, age of their teacher is included, the average age of the group would be one year more. What is the age of the teacher? Simple question. First, you need to understand how to solve it um, generally. Like what is the logic behind solving this question? First is on the average, the initial average is given. Initial average, let's say this is A. That was how much? 21. Number of people in is 24. And sum has to be then 21 into 24 which is nothing but 504. Now the average is increased by how much? One year, the average is increased by one year. So average dash is 21 plus one becomes 22. And the number of person is also increased by one. So N dash becomes 25. So what is the new sum? That is some new sum is basically sum plus the teacher's age, which is nothing but 25 into 22, which is 550. So what is the age of teacher? That is 550 minus 504. So you'll get the age of teacher is 46. This is one way of solving this type of question, right? But we are not supposed to solve it this way. How we are supposed to solve, I'm giving you a shortcut. And this shortcut is known as the method of deviation as well. Think about, like initially, what was the average? 21, high enough. Then initial average, then the teacher joined and the average is increased by 1. If the average is increased by 1, so the total will be increased by the total number of people into 1. Now what is the total number of people now? 25. So what is the age of teacher? That is 46. Again I am repeating, first is like the, the initial average. First is initial average. Can I come initial average? Second is, in one is increment or decrement. And 25 is new total number of people. New total number of people. And that will give you the age of the new people. What? Age of the new one. So this is the formula, right? So you have understood it. Now I give you one similar example. I'm just changing the data. Take a clear and I use the same thing again. Now if I changing the data, let's say now this is 11 yoga students and the average is 40 years and it is would be 2 years and this is also less. So I've changed everything. 11 yoga students, average is 40 years, age of the teacher is included, the average of the group would have been 2 years less. Now what do I need to do? By this method, first is the initial average. What is the initial average? 40. Now it is decreased by how much? It is decreased by 2. And how many people are there right now? 12. So what is your answer? 16. So 16 is the age of the teacher. So this is how you can solve this question very fast. You understand? Like how fast you can solve this question just by using this particular logic. And remember this logic you have to keep in your mind while solving question because it gives you a much more pace to solve. Let's go for the next question. Now, MS Dhoni scored a century in his 20th innings and his average increased by 1. So, what was the average after 20th innings? So, let's say after 90th innings, the average is A. A is the average. Take care. So, what is the total score in 19 innings? The sum or the total is 19A. And what is the 20th innings score? That is 100. He scored a century. What is his total score now? So total in 20th innings is 19A plus 100. Also we know, also we know in 20th innings, after 20th innings, his average is now A plus 1. So what is the sum of runs in 20 innings? That is 20 into A plus 1. Now these two things are equal. So if I equate it, it is 20A is equal to 19A plus 100. So I'll get A equals to 80. But my question is after 20th innings, so what is A plus 1? It's nothing but 81. That is your answer. If it is 81, so this is your answer and this can fetch you the right answer as well. 
बट रिमेंबर वन थिंग जनरली द एवरेज इज टोटल स्कोर बाय टोटल आउट बट फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन आई एम यूजिंग एवरेज इज एस टोटल स्कोर बाय टोटल इनिंग्स एंड आई एम सेइंग लाइक ही हैज बीन डिसमिस्ड एम एस डी हैज बीन डिसमिस्ड इन एवरी इनिंग्स सो दैट इज सेम देन नाउ इफ आई नीड टू यूज द शॉर्टकट यू रिमेंबर द शॉर्टकट इन द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन लेट मी यूज द शॉर्टकट अगेन now if i'm going to use the shortcut what i'm going to do here now think about one thing very carefully so 20th innings mein iska let's say iska after 19th innings the average is a so what is the initial average a what is the increment the increment is 1 right and in how many innings that is 20 and due to this increment why this increment happened because the century in 20th innings in the century in 20th innings is 100 right So from this thing I can say a equals to 80. So what is a plus one? Then the answer is 81. So you understand this thing very carefully. Like a is the initial average, then one is the increment. 20 is the number of matches now is equal to like score at 20th innings. So I'm using the same things in the previous question. So you can see one particular thing can be so much useful in so many cases. So that's why I have always told you since these many days. Like you should be very clear about the logic of anything we are using, and this is the logic behind it. We are just using the deviation method. If one is increased, it is increased in total. If average is increased by one, the total has to be increased by average into total number of people. So these kind of small things we are using to solve this question, and I hope you have understood this. And for the time being, please practice all of these type of questions. We will have another average session, and in that average session, we will discuss some more challenging questions. And after that session, we will have. may we will have weighted average then we'll go for mixed allegation then we'll continue this classes right so for the timing please do practice please do lot of doubt solving and i hope you will find it amazing while solving this type of questions so see you in the next class